Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. Why am I in my monkey suit right now? Because uh, this stems from my shouldering your rifle video where I got asked, what about with body armor on? Um, it is different, it can be very different. Uh, and depending on a number of things, it can very much be a pain in the ass. So let's get into that today. So before we do that, if you like this sort of content, don't forget to hit like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell, remember to click all notifications, and sharing is the best way, easiest way, and most free way to help get the videos out there. I very much appreciate everybody's support out there. You can also become a member of the channel uh, and also shop through affiliate links off my website which is down below costs you nothing extra but it helps out the channel tremendously thank you very much shouldering your rifle shooting your rifle with armor on it can be a pain in the ass and unfortunately unlike when it comes to shouldering a rifle without armor on it's very very much dependent on your rifle, your stock, how your body armor fits you. Um, just there's, a, there's so many things that go into it that I couldn't even conceivably cover all of them. However, there are a few things you can try to see if it helps you out. So first let's start with, you do not change your armor. You do not change your armor so that you can fit your stock in your shoulder better. I say that meaning, I don't mean the plates, maybe you get a thinner plate, maybe you have thicker plates right now, things like that. That's not what I mean. I mean, you do not change how your armor fits your body. You do not change the location of your plate bags in order to open up a spot in your shoulders in order to fit your rifle in there. If you do that, you obviously risk moving the protective part of your armor, being the armor itself, you risk moving that away from the area it's supposed to protect. So we don't wanna do that. Also something that I often tell people is if you are primarily a right shoulder shooter, to run wires, gizmos, gadgets, tubes, and, and antennas on the left up the left shoulder pad as opposed to the right if possible that way there's nothing getting tangled that way you're not risking breaking anything or anything like that because i'm sure you can imagine if you have your drinking tube uh, an antenna uh, a bunch of comms wires things like that running up the shoulder and you got a bunch of stuff there that that too can affect your stock placement so i'm going to go back to depending on how wide your plates fit your body, depending on how bulky your carrier is, depending on how thick your shoulder pads are, how far down the front they come, or are they just sitting on top or do you not have shoulder pads at all? How wide is your butt stock? Does your butt stock, like this MFT stock, have a crook that goes down like this? Is it a flatter stock, but comes in at sort of an angle, or is it a completely flat stock that maybe is a little wider? All of this matters as it pertains to you being able to properly shoulder a rifle with armor on. Now the top of your plate, the top of your plate bag and plate should be generally in line with your sternal notch. This is the notch, if you follow your collarbones down, you will find a U-shaped notch at the top of your sternum. Press really, really hard. If it hurts really bad, you found it. Um, your plate should be generally in line with that. I, an inch doesn't matter so much but sitting your plates super low matters a bunch and again you do not move your plate out of proper adjustment in order to fit your stock or rifle now for me i have a thick plate in here this is a level four ceramic plate that is multi-curve so it comes in at the top instead of straight up where a single curve plate will come straight up and only curve this way this one curves this way and back and forth this way it makes for a 
much more comfortable plate uh, as pertains to all your movements and stuff like that and it also helps give a little for your stock placement so if you have a straight up and down plate uh, or single curve plate god forbid you have a no curve plate i don't know what you're doing there but um at least a single curve plate um this it may affect you now since there is not a one approach method to this because it is so nuanced to how your plates fit your body um, how bulky your carrier is, how wide the plate bag is, does it have cuts in it, does it have thin straps, thick straps, and so on. I mean, just so on and so on. There's an endless amount of uh, mixtures that there that can uh, absolutely have an effect. One thing that I start people with is you have an angle on your plate, likely have an angle on your plate. You may even have a swimmer's cut that goes down real low, but you have at least the the shooter's angle on your plate that oftentimes people cannot have their gun straight up and down because and find this deep shoulder pocket because it hits it hits their plate it hits their plate um, so this is one place where a taller optic helps but it, for me to have it straight up and down, I move it up a little bit and I move it out just a little bit, but it is still in, as you can see, it's still in my shoulder pocket. I'm still mostly squared up to the target and I have good control, good control over my rifle. Another way to do this, especially if you cannot have your rifle straight up and down, is to simply Get squared up to the target, as you would normally do. Get squared up to the target and just have your rifle canted. Now I tend to run like this more often. Have your rifle just slightly canted. You can still stay in the pocket. You can still have complete control over the rifle when you bring your arm in. However, you are now angling your stock with the plate angle. Now the sun is behind me and I apologize for that but I don't have all day, so I have to get this stuff done in the morning. So the question is, does this affect your shooting? Um, now, if you are using a ranging reticle in say something like a scope, obviously your scope is now canted and you have to uh, adjust for that. You may have to actually force your gun upright and things like that. But as it pertains to like red dot shooting, it should not as long or as long as you're still employing all the proper fundamentals so with an angle i still have good recoil mitigation i still have complete control over the gun and i am completely off of my carrier so I am sure there are people that already knew this, but uh, for the people that were asking in that video and have asked me in other times as well, hopefully this helps you out. Again, I'm sorry that there's not a better answer for you, uh, because again, it depends on the size of your carrier to the size of your body, to the size of your plate and all this other stuff um, that go into it. However, I think that in my experience, the angling the rifle inward canting it inward still allows you to have good stock placement in your shoulder and allows you to very still easily acquire your sights and have good control over the rifle all right thanks for watching everybody don't forget to hit like share subscribe all that stuff if you like this sort of content hit that notification button hit it hit all notifications you know where it's at hit that button right there. All right, thanks to all my supporters out there. You can become a member of the channel. You can also shop through affiliate links to support the channel and all that fun stuff. Thank you guys for watching. Again, I hope you got something out of it and we'll talk to you later.